6. Juni begannen die Vereinten Streitkräfte Großbritanniens, Amerikas und On the morning of June 6, the commentator begins, the combined forces of Britain, United States and the Soviet launched the invasion of Europe. Ein Warnungssystem verbreitet die Nachricht, dass Festung Europa... The commentary continues. News that the doors of German protected Europe are about to be stormed is relayed through the warning system. Alarmsignale ertönen tief in den Befestigungen am Kanal und unsere Truppen gehen in die Kampfstellungen vor. Alarm bells ring deep in the channel's fortifications and our troops go into action. Landing of Allied troops is preceded by heavy aerial attacks. Here the commentator states that during the night the German shock troops attacked an invading airborne division. The Germans had long feared the possibility of airborne attack. Nazi radio reports at the time of the invasion first claimed our paratroopers had been annihilated. Later gave them credit for the Allied penetration. Commentary, patrol troops report that Allied naval units are nearing mine barrages. Light German naval units enter the battle, the commentary continues. The Nazi propagandists later apologized that their tiny fleet was up against the two most powerful navies in the world. The Nazis also complained that the channel waters were unsuited to U-boats so that their naval operations were confined to the use of a few destroyers and e-boats, which they claimed did a magnificent job. The commentator describes the following as the battle for the Bay of the Seine, and explains that these pictures were taken shortly before German artillery units went into action. In these long shots, just enough of the vast Allied invasion fleet is shown to excuse the German army for not having pushed the Allies back into the sea. The Allied ships shown here include British destroyers and one battleship. These German scenes are testimony to the courage of Allied naval units which battled German shore guns at recklessly close range in order to provide cover for our troops. The commentary, enemy landing troops penetrated the mouth of the river Orne, suffering heavy casualties. This action is probably near the village of Wiesterham, where the Germans succeeded in repulsing an Allied landing. German troops, though surrounded, held the British back for several days. Commentary identifies these as crack combat troops of an SS division 
opposing an Allied embarkation as it approaches the shore. Troops in these landing boats were annihilated or taken prisoner within a short time, says the commentator. Deutsche Panzer gehen zum Angriff gegen England und Amerikaner vor. The announcer goes on to say that behind the protection of this forest, thousands of German troops and tanks prepare for the assault on the enemy. The announcer boasts that Allied airborne troops suffered heavy losses. Some of these prisoners are American airborne troops, although they are not identified in the commentary. The announcer says only that these Allied troops were taken prisoners shortly after the beginning of the battle. On this landing field, it is explained, many troop planes were destroyed before they could enter the combat. The announcer says, Hundreds of American and British planes were wrecked, many of them snapped in half. Much enemy equipment is lost, including this American Jeep, which is unloaded intact from a wrecked plane. Gefangene aus Nova Scotia. Kanadischer Fallschirmjäger. The announcer says, the Nova Scotian troops are questioned before being taken to prison camp. Amerikanische Bomber gesichtet. Unsere Flak nimmt den Kampf auf. The commentator identifies the scene of this American bombing attack as Caen. Jagd 
Luftgeschwader der Luftwaffe fliegen den amerikanischen Formationen entgegen. He says fighter planes of the Luftwaffe fly to meet the American formations. An air battle takes place over the Bay of the Seine. commentary describes these civilians as victims of the bombing of Caen, where the air attacks, he says, caused excessive damage. This whole sequence is carefully designed by the Germans to play up the hardships inflicted on the French by the Allied invasion. Nazi propagandists describe scenes such as these as the meaning of Allied liberation. Optimistically, the announcer says that these are German divisions on their way to surround the enemy. These troops are described as an SS armed division in combat. The objective, says the announcer, which was the conquering of a port, was not attained. The Allied attempt cost many deaths and much destruction in Normandy. These men are identified as Allied airborne troops found in the fields and taken prisoner. The Nazis know that the German people have always been awed by America's production capacity. In sequences like this, they attempt to show that American equipment is no match for German guns. commentary, our troops move up with flaming tanks flanking the march of battle. This wounded man is described as the survivor of a wrecked American Sherman tank. Deutsche Panzerwagen bringen vor. German armored tanks advance. This is the Bayeux sector, where, says the announcer, the enemy advance is also held back. Admitting Allied penetration into the fortress Europe, the commentator says that the streets of the small country villages serve as combat areas. The Entscheidungsschlacht für Europa hat begonnen. The final battle for Europe has begun. <laughs> 